YouTube, Battle Community, fans of mixtapes, friend of people on the internet, my name is Giggins. And we are here today to talk about how to make a mixtape and how to make a really good mixtape. So, a bit of a different change on my channel here to do like a how to video, but I thought this was pretty cool because um, mixtapes mix tapes have always been a really big, important part of my life, whether it's on an actual tape or on CD. Um, even from when I, was, when I was a kid making cassette tapes by myself or like trading them with my friends. It was always a, a big deal. It was a cool thing to make something and give it to somebody else or have someone give you a mixtape. Because um, it was it was a statement. It was like a, it was a way to show your friendship and a way to you know, give a message to somebody through music. Um, which I always think is one of the most like deeply personal things you can do is trade music with somebody else um, who's equally as into music as you are. So um, with that in mind, uh, with the advent of like Spotify and stuff these days where you can make just like infinite playlists, which is totally cool, I wanted to make a video about how constraints on the physical media, um, physical medium, I should say, um, I think results in a better mixtape. Yes, it's very cool on Spotify, you can make a mixtape that never ends and then share it digitally with somebody. That's cool. Um, you know, especially if they're far away or in a different country, there's, you know, nothing to mail to them. That's cool, but on the other hand, it's very cool to receive things in the mail. Um, so with that, uh, this is gonna be a how-to video, in my opinion, of what I think makes and constitutes a really good mixtape, like how to arrange it, sequence it, all that kind of stuff. So if you ask me, I think mixtapes come down to five things. Um, there has to be a theme. So basically, what's the reason? Why are you making this? Like, what's the whole point? Um, is it for a long drive? Is it for that crush you have in college? Is it for uh, um, introducing somebody to a band that you really like or a group of artists that you're into? You know, what's the point? There has to be a reason why you're making this mixtape. Now, with that said, everything I'm saying here will also have an opposite. If you just want to make a mixtape for the hell of it and just completely random, yeah, of course, go for it. But I'm going with a different route here. Um, so, yeah, what's your theme? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to give across? What's the point? Um, step two, flow and transition. So this is basically sequencing. And when you have a CD, you know, if you go out and buy an album, a lot of careful thought and consideration was put into the organization of each track and where it fits in relation to the other and hopefully make some sort of gelled, cohesive feel. There's an aesthetic to it. Um, so, you know, when you start off an album, um, usually it's a really attention grabbing track or like an introduction to get to the next track and then like there's a, there's a flow, there's a vibe throughout the whole thing, some ups and downs, cause it's like being on a roller coaster. Um, you get some intense moments, you get some quieter moments, you get some uh, uh, middle of the road, some ballads, some rockers, some slow stuff, so there's a, a flow to that. And that flow has to be done correctly to make, uh, make the journey happen from the start of the CD to the end of the CD or record or tape, whatever you're playing. Um, constraints. This is what I was talking about before. So, when you have a CD or a cassette tape, um, there's an, there's a time. You don't have forever to work with. You got 90 minutes for the most part. Um, or, you know, less on a CD. But, no, it's not even, it's 80 minutes on a CD, that's right. 90 minutes on a cassette tape. But, um, I think having that constraint actually brings out the strengths. Um, so yeah, constraints bring strengths. That's that's my that's my that's my motto for this. Ugh, god, it was bad. Anyways, yeah. So when you've got a certain amount of time to work with, you can't just throw everything on there. Some things have to go. And when that happens, you are putting out the best possible songs you can, the best choices you can. You can always make a second one, but like that first one has to be really, really good. Um, name. You really need to name your mixtape. That's important. If you're giving this to somebody, it can't be just like, here's a mix. You can call it mix for somebody. That's cool, because that means it was a personalized kind of thing. You put this together for them, and uh, now it's their disc or tape to enjoy. Um, it's their personal message from you. Um, and number five, the overall thing, overall vibe about this, keep it real, keep it honest. Um, I've, 
I've, I'm guilty of making mixtapes before where, like, I didn't know half the bands, but I thought they sounded cool, and I was trying to impress somebody. So, like, I did that. Um, but that comes across as phony. So, like, be yourself, be honest, um, you know, really know the music you're putting on there, and, and know the messages behind it, and then why you're putting it on that mix to give to somebody, because you're giving this as, as a message. Um, or you're keeping it for yourself to remind yourself that you weren't as cool as you thought you were, and half of those bands that you thought were cool actually kind of sucked. But hey, you were in college. So, with that, um, I wanted to make a mixtape, um, mix CD actually this time, to put myself in the mood of this video and see where I can go with it. So, I went a little all out. Um, I've got a tape and a CD. So, the CD that I made happened to be a Beach Boys one because, hey, you guys happen to know I like the Beach Boys. So what I did was I took, a, a, it took about three and a half-ish hours between like selecting the songs, I selected the theme, and then I selected the songs, and then I sequenced them, and I pared down, you know, the amount of songs that I wanted on the CD itself, um, because I like constraints, constraints, uh, a combination of constraint and strength at the same time. And in that process, I figured, you know what, I'm going to go all out and do album artwork, put a track listing on the back, the whole nine yards. So with this, I present my very Snoopy-like inspired drawings, the Beach Boys, Cool Cool Water, the best of the Beach Boys from 1970 to 1979. So I drew them looking kind of how they looked during the, uh, the Sunflower era, um, you know, in the, in the gatefold there. So Denny's got his hat on with the goggles. Brian's got the good humor hat on. There's Carl with his bandana. I didn't put a hat on Al. Also, I can't draw Al. Mike's got a super long beard. And Bruce is up there without a top hat. Or a car. But, um, I did side label. So you can see that. Pretty cool. And then the back. With the actual track listing on it. And I also put the album and the year that it came out on the other side. Um... So I thought that was pretty cool. And I'll, I'll post this down below as well. Um, so you can have that track listing there. But then I just named the CD. I always date my CDs. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm OCD. And two, because um, it's a snapshot of where you were in your life at that time. If you happen to pick it up 10 years from now, be like, oh yeah, I made this. Why did I make it? Oh, I made it in 2018. Oh yeah, I was doing my videos at that point. Yeah, super cool. Um, or I might give this to somebody and it's just kind of fun to have a date on something because it's of that time. So in the future, you can look back and be like, man, that was a cool time. I remember playing this CD in my car. Um, there's a lot to it. Um, with that, I also want to show off a tape that I made. The theme of this tape was um, dubs from 45 RPM records. So a ton of these 45s I didn't have anywhere else on they weren't available online or I didn't have the CD or the record or anything else. I just had 45s and so I made a cassette. So I have stuff on here from Tall Tall Trees, Kishibashi, Camera Obscura, um, Jimi Hendrix, Franz Ferdinand of Montreal, Sharon Jones, Ted Leo. I mean, this, it goes on and on and on. Um, but it's a cool tape. So, you know, uh, organization wise on this one, the order wasn't like too much of a concern only because the theme was random enough on its own that like it didn't justify needing an order. Uh, I probably could have done that, but also would have taken me a thousand years to get it done. It just holds up the back for a while. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of it. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of work. Um, well, it does and it doesn't. If you've done this a thousand times, you know what kind of work you're getting into. But um, one thing I do want to point out, especially on this album that I made here, so the cool thing about making a mix is you can make it an album. You can make it your own special album. Um, and so with this one, sequencing was important, as it is with all the mixes that I make, uh, because you want one song to flow into the other and create a theme and a vibe throughout the whole thing. So it opens up with Sail on Sailor, which I think is a fantastic opener. You always want your opening song to be attention grabbing and uh, really kind of get the ball rolling and kind of wake you up and be like, all right, the CD's on, let's go. Um, the second song is Slip On Through. So I thought that was kind of a good jump after Sail On Sailor because that's also the opening track on Sunflower. So 
to have two opening tracks in a row, there's definitely an urgency there um, and an energy that's really, really up. And I felt the two songs next to each other were pretty cool. Then you see, you know, go down a little bit to Long Promise Road, a little bit more of a groove, but that song also picks up halfway through with, you know, nice guitars, um, good synths throughout this thing. Um, and I really liked how the song ended because it fades really well into California Feeling as the next song, um, the version that was on the Made in California box set. So with that, I mean, the whole CD plays like that. So like it goes, um, and after that, there's like this whole world. Then you get a section of slower songs like The Night Was So Young, Forever, Angel Come Home. But Angel Come Home is kind of cool because it really fades out. Um, and then it busts into Funky Pretty, which I thought was pretty cool. The live version from the In Concert album. Um, then you, I keep up the upbeat vibe with Let Us Go On This Way and Marcella. Um, and I kind of slow it down a little bit with Just Once In My Life. But I thought that song was okay to do because there's a good energy to that one. And plus it's really loud. There's a lot of synth and stuff happening in that song. So even for it being a slower song, there's a lot going on with it. Um, then jump back in with It's Okay. You know, Mesa Help to Stand Alone. It's a beautiful day. And slowing down the vibe. Um, so then we get to add some music to your day, which is just a really nice chill song. Then the next song's even more chill with Only With You, which is a pretty heavy piano-based song, um, which leads to the next song, an even heavier piano-based song, Till I Die. Um, and then next song, Surf's Up. They just go hand in hand. And then the name of the album I made, I ended it off with Cool Cool Water because it's a fantastic closer. I love how it ends Sunflower that way. Um, and I thought it'd be a good closer around here too. Also the name of the set, you know, we gotta have that song in there, so. That's kind of how I did it. You know, when you make a mixtape, there has to be a reason, a purpose, and a lot of thought behind it. This is what it boils down to. Yes, you can make a totally random mixtape, but when you put care and consideration and thought behind it, it really shows. And I think the person you give that mixtape to appreciates it even more. So I'm probably going to give this to one of my friends, um, see what they think, you know, introduce them to 70s Beach Boys, because there really are a lot of hits on this thing. I mean, beyond like... Um, Marcella was a single, um, yeah, forever, they might know forever, but most of these songs are completely foreign, so, um, yeah, pretty cool, I like introducing people to music, and I also like being introduced to music, so, it goes both ways, but, um, that's kind of it, I just wanted to make a quick video to talk about this, I think making mixtapes is important, and I think giving them to your friends, or your family, or whoever, is important, because it's a message, you're saying, hey, this is a bunch of songs I think are really cool. You're going to dig them. Uh, they make me think about you. Or um, I think you're going to like this band. You know, give them a try. You know, like I have an extensive knowledge of this band. Um, here's a selection of their songs. What do you think? You know, can't hurt. So with that, that's about it. I just wanted to make a quick video about that. Um, so yeah, Beach Boys, Cool Cool Water. I give it a 10 out of 10. My name is Giggins. This has been uh, How to Make a Mixtape, How to Make a Mix CD. And um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see me do, I'm totally open to it. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of ideas I'm going to be working on soon. So um, if you got anything you'd like to see me do, um, music wise, talking about mix CDs, lay it on me. So my name is Giggins. This has been How to Make a Mixtape. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.